Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Off Farm Income Podcast. You have found our YouTube channel, and you're on episode number 828. Well, today I want to expose you to a fundraising opportunity for the FFA that can continue during social distancing and during the coronavirus shutdowns. I don't have any business affiliation with this company at all, but it seems like a good opportunity to continue to support FFA chapters, so I wanted to tell you about it. I'm going to be interviewing uh, Jesse Stewart, uh, who is the president for Bloom for Good. Uh, she's going to be talking all about their fundraising programs, how it works online, how students can still continue to fundraise for their chapters without violating any social distancing rules, and the great return on investment for chapters when they do this. Let's jump into that right now. Jess, welcome to the show. Thank you for, for joining me this morning. Matt, thank you so much for having us. You bet. I, I've enjoyed getting to know you and your team and to learn about what Bloom for Good does. And, and so I'm excited to, to profile the opportunities here for, for everybody out there in the FFA world during this coronavirus shutdown. Yeah. It's uh, been a little bit of a crazy time all the way around. Yeah. Well, let's do this. I would love to introduce you to our audience. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure. My name is Jesse Stewart. I'm the president of Bloom. We are a fundraising company uh, based out of North Carolina in the Wilmington area. And I currently reside in Florida, so I work remotely. But what we do with FFA is we've made a large commitment, um, not just with FFA. We work with other PGA and other youth organizations as well, but we've made a major commitment with FFA, mainly because the CEO of our company, Pete Hexter, grew up on a farm and uh, he decided late in life to start one more company and to give back as much as possible to our youth. So um, that's what we do. We fundraise, but mainly for FFA, and we've made a large commitment over the next five years, and we're excited to uh, keep the ball rolling and move it, moving forward. Okay. Uh, when you say you've made a large commitment over the next five years, what does that mean? Yeah. So we made a million dollar commitment to help FFA over the next five years. Wow. Okay. That's great. Uh, and then coronavirus happens. So uh, yeah. uh, we are definitely uh, pivoting around all of this. <laughs> all right. Well, I'm not letting you off that easy. I want to know more about you. So tell me Got about it. this PGA thing. Okay. So we have a, I'm a PGA professional. I've been a PGA professional for uh, well over 20 years. I went to college at Methodist University and uh, played on a couple of national um, golf pro in the national PGM program and on their golf team. And uh, I've been a golf professional in the golf business by nature. So when the opportunity arose for me to come work for Bloom originally, I started with just the PGA fundraising portion. Okay. And that's incredible. So what we offer with PGA is I work with PGA foundations and we have a golf bag program mm -hmm. and we allow kids to fundraise for uh, PGA golf bags, which is amazing. And then they get the foundation logo on there and their name on there once they reach their goal and we ship it to them and the money goes back to the foundation. Okay. So That's you awesome. were, you were one of those high school kids on the golf team. Is that right? That's right. That's and right. I proceeded all through college. And all through college. So you're one of those kids. Like when I was, uh, when my daughter was like seven, we'd see somebody out on the golf course or, you know, like on the, uh, on the putting, the practice putting green or the, uh, the uh, driving range with their kids and they'd be out there practicing. And we'd be like, that person's paying for college right there. Are you that yeah. person? Sun up to sundown. I most of my friends went to the mall after school, and I got dropped off at the golf course to practice. Okay, so how so, how many holes in one have you have you hit in your career? Three. Three, really? What yeah. was the, what was the furthest? Uh, I want to say the furthest one was 140 yards. Wow. Um, I was young, and I was the first one. I was having the worst round of golf I think I'd ever played. I'd play was playing with my dad. And uh, I about killed him with the golf club running towards him up in the air <laughs> with it because I was so excited. Uh, that's probably one of my fondest memories on the golf course. <laughs> no kidding. Well, that's awesome. I've yeah. never I, I've never come close, but I, I've come really far. Like when you're in a tournament and there's a there's a car sitting out there by the green and if you hit a hole in one, you win the car. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I basically you hit the car. Oh no. I like the wrong, <laughs> the wrong fairway. The wrong fair. Yeah. Oh, okay. At least you didn't hit the car. Yeah. It's super embarrassing. My golf skills are, are not great. 
Okay. Well, that is great. So, so let's talk about, so you kind of talked about the origins of Bloom for Good. Yes. Tell me about fundraising. So fundraising is something that I've become more familiar with. Like when I've gone to the national FFA convention and just kind of walked around uh, the floor, uh, the, the um, expo, expo hall or whatever you want to call it, and just spoke and met people that are involved in fundraising and they're there to talk about their method or what they do. What is, tell me about this whole area of fundraising. What is going on out there and kind of how is it helping programs like the FFA and other programs? So fundraising in itself can be very challenging, I think, especially right now during COVID. But I think what we do is very unique in the fact that as a fundraising company, we offer 80% back to FFA. So 70% stays within the chapter and another 10% goes back 5% to the state and 5% back to national. Okay. And then there we offer grants um, per year. And then we also have some state funding as well that we work with the state directors or national to give back as much money as possible. So that's what makes us, I feel like, really re unique. And the one reason we decided to get heavily involved with the bigger commitment that we've made over the next five years was exactly what you just said. We were at national convention two years ago, mm -hmm. and Pete and I did exactly what you were doing. We were walking the floor and kind of exploring and looking at all the cool things that are available. But I think what really touched both of us and we left blown away was the impact that these kids are making on the future of America, which sure. is awesome. So we left so inspired and thought we've got to do more. And that kind of roller coastered into where we are today. Okay. So I think as far as like fundraising, we offer this unique opportunity, but what I love about it is we're both so inspired to do it because mm -hmm. of who they are as people. Yeah, I've had the same experience since I started interviewing FFA students and have been blown away uh, by the quality of, of students that come on the show, their ability to speak to me, and uh, the things they're accomplishing are just incredible. It is. Our future is looking very bright. That much I do know. Definitely, definitely. Okay, so the there's all sorts of different fundraising models out there, but the, the purpose of this is that individual FFA chapters are looking for they're looking for money or they want to, they need to generate revenue so they can send their students to competitions like for CDEs or they can send them to conferences like the Washington Leadership Conference or the aforementioned National Convention and that that is the emphasis behind the fundraising that FFA chapters are doing do I have that right Yes, that's correct. Okay. Or they're looking to fund building projects, which we've seen a lot. So a lot of people are trying to build a new greenhouse mm -hmm. or uh, buy additional feed or stock up for, you know, different projects they have going on in the classroom. Mm -hmm. So we have both chapter fundraising and individual fundraising. Okay. Now, I, there's all sorts of different methods. Like, for example, uh, the local FFA chapter we have where I'm at, I sit on the advisory committee for that FFA chapter. Uh, we do, we have a big auction every September. It's a huge fundraiser. And of course, we've all got our fingers really crossed that we get to have it this fall. Um, but that that thus creates the, the issue we're dealing with right now is that if your timing for that type of fundraiser is right now, all of a sudden you're not having it or you're having it virtually and it just doesn't have the same pop or pizzazz or whatever. And it, it creates all sorts of challenges. So uh, what Bloom for Good is doing is you have the opportunity for people to continue with fundraising, even though we're social distancing. Am I understanding that right? Yes. So um, if anyone knows about what we do already, because they've met us or they've worked with us because we worked a lot of chapters already, we did do or do, we still do traditional fundraising with cards mm -hmm. and um, that's still always an option, but as you said, social distancing and door-to-door -door selling or those types of things are kind of out of the window. Mm -hmm. So we had already planned to launch this fall our online fundraising platform for FFA, but when this happened, we saw a tremendous opportunity to continue to help and grow the funding for FFA. So we kind of upped the timeline and went ahead and launched our online fundraising, which is good okay. for individuals or for chapters. And they can, we customize a page for them. And then it's it's a lot of just online crowdfunding where you can send it to anybody in the U.S. And what we offer is the 
discount network. So it's an FFA travel and savings platform membership that's good for a year, which is the same thing they sell on the card, but okay. now we allow them to actually sell it online. So they're not bound by door to door selling or having to be selling at a farmer's market or any of those things. Mm -hmm. We just offer this unique opportunity and they can still, if they do it for a chapter, every kid can be involved. Every kid can join the, as a participant in the fundraiser and they can have their name up there and it just splits their goal by how many people are participating. So they can still offer incentives and competition, which is always fun when you're trying to raise funds. <laughs> okay. All right. So this, okay. So a couple things. So traditionally these, what would I call them? A travel voucher, travel card? What am I, when you say so travel? It's an FFA travel and savings membership. Okay. And so what does that look like to the person, you know, when the FFA member is trying to get somebody to buy the card or now the online aspect of it, what does the person that's purchasing this get in return? What What's their incentive to purchase other than supporting the chapter? Yeah. So the number one support would be to support the chapter, but the FFA travel and savings card or membership is an online based, you know, kind of like coupons, but they're all digital and there's thousands of opportunities. The cool thing about it is it's both local and national. So you can use it anywhere you travel right off of your mobile phone. So thank you. Or let's say hopefully traveling soon yeah. more than later. You can be anywhere and decide you want to go to the movies and you can pull it up on your phone and you can get 30% off of the movie theater. Okay. Or you want to order in Papa John's and you pull it up and you get 25% off. So you can use it anywhere you travel. It's not just locally, which is okay. awesome. Okay. Then you also, it does include for the travel portion, $100 travel credit. So their wholesale pricing on travel basically worldwide and you start off with a hundred dollar travel credit on the travel platform which is really awesome so we're excited to offer this um the other cool thing about it is that we work with the largest savings and discount network out of utah they host our platform called access development they're our partners and there's the opportunity for a vendor to join so it's free for the vendor. So if someone really locally wanted to support their FFA chapter, mm -hmm. they can also join and be a part of the network and offer savings to everybody who does and gets the membership. Okay. So is this an app? Is that what it is? It is. It is an app okay. or you can do it online. So you can do it either way. You know, it, I think it depends on generation. I think the younger generation uses the app a lot, but we do see a lot of people do it right off their computer. Okay. So it's so I'm just trying to get the frame of reference for people out there. Uh, this is something where they've got it on their phone. Mm -hmm. uh, they've got to go to, you know, they got to go five counties over for a jackpot show or something like that. And then all of a sudden uh, they get there and they can pull up this app and go, what discounts do I have available to me in this town? Is yes, that right? That's correct. Yes. Okay. Shopping, food, um, entertainment. Office Depot, stuff like that. A lot of different opportunities on there's thousands and thousands and thousands. So there's too many to name, okay. but it's my FFA rewards is the website. If anybody wants to look it up and it will give you everything in your area or anywhere you're traveling. Okay. So this can be sold right now. Um, but obviously there's the challenge of using it right now because it's travel based. It, well, no, it's not travel based. Okay. You can use it, locally, but there's also online shopping, which okay. I utilize more than I do the local <laughs> That okay. Works. Okay. Yeah. So there's there. It's not just travel. There's shopping. There's restaurants. There's there's stuff like that. So it can be used yeah. immediately. So travel, I think yes, it can be used immediately. I think the travel is an added bonus, especially like right now because people a lot of people aren't traveling. Right. So you do have the options to use any of the other twelve categories that are on there. Okay. So there's dining, there's shopping, there's entertainment like the movies. Mm -hmm. So the movies are 25 to 30 percent off. All you have to do is book it before you go, and then you show them your voucher once you get there, which I've used a lot of. Um, ice cream and pizza. Those are my three favorites: movies, <laughs> ice cream, and pizza. I have a ten year old. <laughs> gotcha. Actually, I just did here this morning. I was out doing chores and uh, listening to a podcast, and I heard that uh, both airline reservations and hotel reservations are going up. So hopefully we're moving back towards travel right now as well. So uh, in, in a safe way, of course, but yeah, hopefully yes. that's happening. Okay. So I'd say that would be a good time to use it because I think everybody is probably itching to travel. Yeah, I think that's probably right. Okay. Yes. So you talked about the percentage that mm -hmm. the FFA chapter gets back. 
uh, when they sell these. And that was 80%, is that right? 70%, 70%. stays with the chapter. Okay. Another 10% goes back to FFA. Oh, five okay. at the state level and then five at the national level. Okay, so 70% to the chapter and then 5%. And this is the of each individual purchase of each travel what do we call it do we, tra we call it a card just to make it simple is that what you refer to it the as? FFA travel and savings membership okay. is what it is okay. what the consumer is purchasing whenever they're selling because we have the two platforms the cards or the online so just okay. to make it easy it's a it's a membership okay so 70 percent is going to the chapter five percent to the state ffa organization five percent to national ffa okay and then 20 percent is coming back to operate bloom for good and to make all That's this work. Okay. Yes. How does that compare to the rest of the industry when it comes to uh, when it comes to uh, fundraising? So everybody does something a little bit differently, and I, you know, I'm not sure exactly 100% what everybody's going to offer now moving forward. Mm -hmm. But I would say most traditional fundraising is a normally 40%, 30 to 40%. There are some out there that are rare that would do 50. Uh, percent, but I I know for sure we're the largest give back, um, okay. and it's a pretty easy ask I think for people to support FFA for all that we're giving back as well. And so this goes back to that commitment that was made mm -hmm. by Bloom for Good that uh, this this final business in your your founders I guess his repertoire uh, yeah. is is one he wanted to create that is gonna it's gonna be like socially beneficial that's probably a bad way to put it but it's giving back that's kind of one of the primary purposes here oh for sure so okay. i think just the mission of bloom alone so what's your why which is always what you know mm -hmm. i think any company go back to and and at the heart of our company our why is to give back to our youth um, regardless of what we do whether we're working with the school for fundraising, we're working with the FFA for fundraising, or we're working with golf for fundraising. Mm -hmm. At the heart and soul of what we do is to give back as much money as possible and to help grow our youth because that's our future. Okay. And we have to take care of our future. And um, just like we talked about earlier with going to the state convention, you know, you just get so inspired about being around those kids anyway and what mm -hmm. they do and just the way they carry themselves is incredible. And just having a conversation with, them and how much they've learned and where they're going in life. I just think the leadership opportunity that's there with not just FFA, but um, with the teachers as well and what they provide to them is incredible. So in, at, we stick to our heart and soul all the time and our mission is to give back as much as possible. Okay. Well, let's walk through the process. So let's say that, uh, let's say that the advisor of an FFA chapter called you this morning and said, I'm interested in this. How does this work? How can we fundraise during coronavirus? What would you say? How would you respond to that? So the first thing we would do is we would get them started by filling out the form on our website. Super simple. Goes mm -hmm. through all the information. Kind of go through and determine how much they want to raise and what the funds are for. Then we would set up an online fundraising page for them. Uh, we have some short videos that they can watch to kind of walk them through the process of how to get their chapter members involved. Our VP of FFA sales, Justin Snyder, would reach out to them, contact them, kind of walk through any questions they may have. Mm -hmm. And then we would go from there. It's really very similar to a GoFundMe page or something of an online Facebook ask or whatever. So it's not hard, but we do like to make sure that we stay with them throughout the process so we don't just build it and then leave them to go because it's not unfortunately the field of dreams. If you build it, not everybody comes to <laughs> right. it. We do have to, you know, work with them and share strategies or whatever. Some people just naturally can go and, and throw it out there and fundraise and they have a knack for it. And then others we coach along the way, but we are there through the whole process. We recommend that they fundraise for about 21 days, which is what we see the biggest time is for the kids attention span for them mm -hmm. to be able to ask and for the consumers. So then it's not out there too long. Some people like to fundraise longer than that. It just really depends. So it's based off the chapter and their needs, but we really walk them through it. It's a simple process to get started. The page gets set, set up and to them within 24 hours. Okay. And then what's the strategy recommended for the students? How do they go out and they, they you know, they're cognizant of social distancing and all that type of stuff, but they're getting people to support the chapter. What, what strategies are you recommending? 
So I think that kids are so incredibly creative. I see that every day in my own son and a lot of the other kids that we work with. So they're not having to go to door to door and they are very well versed on how to use their phone. So we mm -hmm. tell them get creative. Okay. You are on social media, use your social media channels, make a video, do stories, do TikToks, do Snapchat. Those things are really going to be for the kid. That marketing strategy is going to be really good for them because that's they're good at it. Mm -hmm. So let them be creative. Let them figure out the best way. Let's say a chapter wants to raise, you know, five thousand dollars, and they have twenty five kids. That five thousand dollars gets taken and broken down between those twenty five kids. So they have a small amount of money to raise. Mm -hmm. So make it an incentive. Make it fun. Who can get there the fastest? Who can raise the most? Let them be creative in how they want to do it. We've seen uh, White Oak, a small chapter in Jacksonville, when we were still doing cards, mm -hmm. they raised a boatload of money, like $4,500 in two weeks selling their cards. And they made videos and they figured out strategic ways that work for them. So we offer suggestions, but the ag teacher and the kids are going to know their best way to get to the consumers. So okay. we just kind of push them along. Everybody's different. Something that works for me is not going to work necessarily for you. So we just talk through what's worked for a bunch of different people. And mm -hmm. most of the time we find one that works. Okay. So they're, they're making videos, they're posting stuff on social media. Is there any of the old fashioned, just calling people up? I would say yes for friends and family, Okay, but you get a much, let's be honest, you get a much bigger reach if you're using yeah. social media, okay. which is usually I, I guess I go back to the question, you know, how many, I think there's more texting than calling, if I'm being honest. Sure. <laughs> okay. I don't know how many kids are old fashioned by picking up the phone sure. and just calling for an ask anymore, but texting is definitely uh, a great strategy. Yeah. I'm old fashioned because I think you pick up and you talk on the phone, but I don't know anything. Yeah. I, I think you should pick up and talk on the phone and ask, especially like grandparents and stuff like that. Sure. But you know, I think if I were to poll 10 people, probably eight or nine of them would say texting or social media would be easier for me. Okay. Now, is there any, so you talked about videos, you talked about TikTok and things like that. These are terms I've heard. I've, my <laughs> daughter just showed me TikTok the other day. First time. Oh, are you doing dances? What's that? Are you doing dances? Uh, no, no. The next time <laughs> I not. dance will be her wedding and that'll be one dance. Uh, <laughs> so... Uh, but she did show it to me, so I'm familiar with the term at least. Yeah. But is there a recommended strategy? So, for example, uh, say I'm just going to think of two things. One, being silly. Mm -hmm. And two, being serious and saying, hey, this is our FFA chapter. Let me walk you around our barn. You know, what what do you, what results do you see working best or what results, I guess, do you think might work best since you're just launching this aspect of it? So I think what works best is probably exactly what you said. Here's our farm. Here's okay. what our needs are. Kind of putting together that why. You know, same thing we talked about a while ago. Anytime you're looking for funds, why? Okay. And you have to be able to tell your story. So I think there's definitely the serious part that has to come before the fun part. And it can be fun. It can be both. But I think that sharing what you're going to use the funds for and how it's going to impact your FFA chapter and your future needs would 100% be the way to go. Okay. So if a chapter right now, if their whole fundraising strategy involved massively violating social distancing guidelines because of what they normally do, this is an opportunity to continue even though that other thing is prohibited right now. Yes. I mean, and we hope we're going to get back to traditional fundraising with right. the card, but there's no reason that you can't do both. I yeah. mean, even before um, we had a bunch of chapters that said, hey, we want to do cards, but we also want to do the online in case someone wants to pay by credit card. Okay. You can have both. So okay. when we get back to traditional fundraising, you can do one or the other or both. Mm -hmm. All we want to do is maximize the funds for the FFA chapter. So we're going to figure out which way works the best. Okay. All right. Very good. So, uh, when you, when it was exclusively cards, if an FFA chapter wanted to get involved, was there a minimum number of cards that they had to purchase from you? Yes. A hundred cards. Okay. So how we did 10% returns. Oh, say that again. You did 10% returns. What's that mean? 
So if they they could they could return ten percent of whatever they ordered if they didn't sell okay. within the time. Okay. So now, how does that work if they want to do this online? Is there a, some sort of a minimum? There's, not, there's there's no there's nothing. There's no okay. risk. Okay. So they don't have to purchase anything. They don't have to store anything. There's literally no risk. It's all reward. Okay. You don't do that very much, do you? No, you don't. <laughs> No risk, no, but just reward. No, you don't hear that very often. No, you don't. I'm going to start fundraising for the Off Farm Income podcast. I like it. No, I'm Yes, do it. No, no, no. I'm not going to. Uh, okay, so that's great. Okay, what else do we need to know about Bloom for Good? About By the way, before I go to that question, Bloom for Good, tell us about this title. Tell us about the company name. Oh, so um, even before I was at the company and when Pete started it, he had some other people that worked for him and they, they kind of came up with the name mm -hmm. and um, it took a little while, I think, for it to settle on him because he was like, bloom for good. And then we get, you guys must do plants a lot because you're bloom. <laughs> right. Um, so we do get that a lot. We randomly do sometimes get voicemails about ordering flowers but we really don't have anything to do with flowers. But as we've grown the company and as we've grown into it, it really mm -hmm. does fit up because what we're asking or what we're providing people is a chance for growth and funding. Mm -hmm. So anything we do is blooming for good. So it's really, it, it really has stuck and it's a, it's a great name for our company and, and where we're headed and what we're doing. All right, great. Okay, what have I not asked you about that people need to know the burning question that I never thought to ask. So I think the biggest thing that right now during this time of craziness mm -hmm. where we're all trying to figure out what's next and how do we fundraise or really like, how do we do anything? We decided to pivot, not pause, which I've often said is, is what can you do right now to help and benefit people? So the one thing besides the online fundraising that we did, which is fantastic, and we do have a couple of chapters already online fundraising, we offer these free webinars mm -hmm. uh, with Jason Wetzler, who's a national former officer of FFA, and we're doing one every three to four weeks for ag teachers and chapter officers. So if you haven't heard about it, please tune in. And if you're looking for additional information from Bloom, go to bloomforgood.com backslash FFA and you will get all the information that you need. Okay, so both on on the fundraising and on the webinars. Both. Yes, and, all on. And what are people getting from the webinars? So our first one we did about three weeks ago, which was a huge success. And we talked about how to really engage your chapter during the summer or a pandemic, which okay. happens to be perfect timing. Right. This next one, we start sign up tomorrow, registration tomorrow uh, for the next one. And it's going to be on officer training. It's a leadership series on officer training, and it will be probably three parts to this one. So we'll go through parts one, two, and three. Okay. Uh, so which will be cool. Okay, so we're recording this on Wednesday the 27th. Uh, this yep. is coming out on Friday the 29th. So that means that the registration actually opened yesterday when this That's aired. Correct. Okay. Yeah. Okay, very yeah. good. So it's open for everybody hearing it's this. Open. Yes, okay. it is open. Awesome. That is great. Okay. Okay. So thank you so much for coming on and sharing this. Thank you for what you do. I uh, really appreciate it. And, uh, you and I, or I shouldn't say you and I, but uh, Off Farm Income and Bloom for Good, we don't have a business relationship. I just want to expose people to opportunities that can help out their chapters during this time. So I really, really do appreciate you coming on and sharing this. Yes. Thank you, Matt, so much for having me. And um, thank you for what you do. And it's awesome to be a part of, part of what you do with Off Farm Podcast. Well, thank you for being here, everybody. Thank you to Jessica Stewart for coming on and sharing that information with us today. And, of course, if you've got any questions, everything will be in my show notes on our website, all the links to everything we talked about there. As always, enjoy your journey to the ultimate lifestyle business, agriculture.